Y'all, I have witnessed legendary diva throat status. Anyway, I'm dramatic. So basically, I'm talking about the Bodyguard musical. Bodyguard the musical? Bodyguard the musical. With Deborah Cox. The Deborah Cox. Nobody's supposed to be here, Deborah Cox. Do you know what I'm saying? This musical is basically a celebration of Whitney Houston songs, and that is what I live for. Because in all honesty, the Power Ballad love song is my all-time holy grail of songs, right? And the best person that I have ever known in my life is Whitney Houston to do those. When you first see, oh, someone's going to do the Bodyguard musical, you're going to be kind of skeptical because who can do Whitney? Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I had those reservations, but the only reason I got tickets was because... In my opinion, the only person who has the ability to even come close to Whitney Houston is Deborah Cox. Like, something in her voice, her throat is just blessed, y'all. So I saw the show two weeks ago in Baltimore, and I had bought tickets months ago because I knew Deborah was going to be there, and I was like, I've never seen Whitney, I've never seen Deborah, and they're doing my all-time favorite, so... I have to go. Usually before I go to any show I do, you know, pre-show research to see if people come to the stage door to see uh, what the show is about. I find out kind of the set list. Not the set list, but like, you know, the order of the songs that are happening. And to my surprise, they've added a bunch of extra Whitney songs. I want to dance with somebody. How will I know? One moment in time. Saving all my love for you. Like, these are classic Whitney songs. And I was so excited that they were added to this as one of my favorite vocalists of all time. Like, why wouldn't I go see that? So, let me just tell you the story of what happened that night. Usually my pre-show ritual is to tweet the main star that I'm going to see. So I tweeted Deborah that I was coming and I was really excited and she favorited my tweet. So, the night was starting off well. Honestly, I was basically there for kind of a Deborah Cox concert. The vocals were top notch. It was kind of insane to me because I was watching her sing and I was like, oh, she's just singing like she's just singing in the shower. It just looked so easy for her. And if y'all have ever tried to sing Whitney, it's impossible. But she was just doing it. Deborah Cox, legendary throat status, like I said. So some highlights of the show, Saving All My Love For You, I got chills. Like chills. When she was doing the second part of I Have Nothing, chills. Like chills. At the big award show scene, she does One Moment in Time, one of the all-time most inspirational songs, delivered with such vocal amazingness. Like, I can't even. I can't even. And then, of course, I Will Always Love You. Impeccable, y'all. And finally, the closing was I'm Gonna Dance with Somebody. So, giving me the hits, giving me the vocals, and let me just say, Deborah Cox was just slaying the vocals all night long. I really don't understand how she can do this show. What is it, like six or seven times a week? Like every day. It is insane. So anyway, the show was amazing. Since I've never seen Whitney live in person, it was the closest thing that I'll ever get to experiencing that. And it was just amazing. And in retrospect, I think the coolest thing about this musical was that the way they chose all of the Whitney songs and the way they kind of wove them into the story was really amazing to me. It wasn't just like, oh, let's just put in a random Whitney song. It only elevated the performance because the songs that were chosen were just so on point to what was happening. Just for example, like, award show is just like a big thing for Rachel Maron, right? And she sings One Moment in Time. Obviously, One Moment in Time was for the Olympics and about big moments in your life. And it goes perfectly with the situation. I don't know. It seems trivial to me because that's what musicals are supposed to do, but... I just found it so cool that they took random Whitney songs and were able to incorporate them so seamlessly. And the show really made me want to get uh, Deborah's new EP because apparently she has just announced that she's releasing an EP with songs from the musical. So obviously I'm going to get that. The only bad part about my experience at this particular show was that I'm on a budget so I bought restricted view seats. So I was literally on like the far right side of the theater with a giant speaker right in front of me. So I kind of couldn't see the right side of the stage. And so <laughs> unfortunately, there are a lot of scenes where they were singing from that side of the stage and I 
couldn't really tell what was going on. But it was okay. I saw the main moments that I needed to see that were the big ballads in the front center stage. So, But I did get really close. I could see Deborah's face. And in my mind, when she was doing I Want to Dance with Somebody and she was pointing out to the crowd, I felt like she was pointing at me one time. So it was amazing. <laughs> oh, I'm such a dork. Okay, and now the best part of the night, y'all. I got to meet Deborah Cox, y'all. Okay. I just love meeting talented people. And it's even more amazing when those people that you really look up to are really nice. She was just so nice. Okay, so anyway, what, ha what happens is the show ends. Part of my pre-research, pre-show research was going to find the stage door, like going on Google Maps and looking around the theater to see where the stage door was. I'm insane, right? After the show ends, I go straight to the stage door to line up in the off chance that Deborah will come out and I can meet her, get an autograph, get a picture. I don't know what I'm trying to do. So I get there. It's like a bitter cold. Not like bitter, but it's probably 30s, right? I've done this before. I don't mind waiting at the stage door because it's the only chance I'll get to see them probably ever in life. My main reason for going is because I just want to give them the positive energy that they've given me and to kind of let them know that they've made a difference in the world because that's just important. The unfortunate thing is that I really stress out when I get there. I was standing outside the door with my sister and my parents and I was just trying to think about, okay, what if she comes out? What am I going to say? I've been lucky enough to meet a few of the artists after I've been to a show or a concert, and I have never not been starstruck. And to me, in hindsight, it's just mad embarrassing. What can you do in that situation? Like, you can't control yourself. Sometimes I want to try and be funny. Sometimes I want to try and be super sincere. Sometimes I bring gifts or letters because I'm weird, obviously. I wanted to say things like, you know, I've been a fan since nobody's supposed to be here. I think your voice is incredible. I think you're the only person who can do Whitney. I wanted to ask, how are you doing? How is it possible that you and your voice can do this every day so effortlessly? I wanted to ask her questions about Whitney. I wanted to ask her about uh, the EP coming out. I wanted to just talk to her about what it's like to be traveling and singing and seeing all the fans, if they even like meeting fans. A lot of that stuff goes through my head, right? But in my experience, you get starstruck and you don't have the wherewithal to kind of say what you want. So what I have figured out for my own personal sanity is that I need to figure out one small thing, one sentence, because that's basically all that I can focus on when I'm in like these starstruck situations. So my main thing was just to be like, okay, if I meet her, I need to tell her that she's amazing and that her voice is just inspirational, just being alive. So anyway, I'm waiting outside, it's cold, whatever, I don't care. Uh, the bodyguard comes out, Judson Mills, he's really nice. I mean, I get his autograph, that's about it. I don't know what's going on with the Baltimore scene. Backtracking a little, when I was in the audience, the people around me were, like, not cheering. And I couldn't tell if they were even enjoying the whole situation. And so it was very kind of awkward for me. And I was hearing people in the back yelling and hollering. And people up here just make me really self-conscious about getting really into the songs. Like singing along, dancing. In my chair, I don't dance, sorry. And so what was even weirder was Deborah Cox is a platinum selling artist. She's major, Grammy nominated. And so I would have thought that at the stage door there would have been tons of people. But there were basically just maybe 15 to 20. And I was like, y'all. Do you know this is Deborah Cox? She's legendary. Her throat is legendary. I don't know why you're not trying to meet her and shower her with the praises that she deserves. Do you know what I'm saying? So anyway, finally this random guy comes out and he's like, Deborah will see you guys now, but only in small groups. So the first group can come up now. And I was like, what? She's coming out? And obviously I was the first one at the door because there's an art to doing the stage door. You kind of have to place yourself in a good position. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like so weird. You don't want to be on the right side of the door because a lot of times the door will open outwards. And then basically the door is going to block you. So it's always best to be kind of on the left side, on the side where the door opens so that when they come out, you're the first person they see. When I got to the stage door, I basically kind of maneuvered 
to the left side of the door. I don't know if that was a good or bad thing because basically what happened was that we were first to go into like this little room and meet her. And I was hyperventilating because the room was right there by the door. She was all decked out in this dramatic like furry hat and coat situation, which was so chic. And when you walk in, she's just right there. And so I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, you're Deborah Cox and you're standing right there. And so I kind of stood like that for a few seconds. And then I was just like, you were amazing. You're amazing. And I, <laughs> and I just kept saying you were amazing. And the show was amazing. Like the show was so good. And then luckily my parents and my sister chimed in because I was just being a total mess dork. OMG, 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 OMG. She was the nicest person ever. She just kept saying thank you, thank you after I kept saying you were amazing, you were amazing. Right here on the top, that's Deborah Cox's autograph. She gave me a selfie and she was so nice about it. And then I was just like, I don't know what else to say now because I'm still starstruck and I don't know what else to say. So... Okay, maybe we should leave. But then she was like, oh, let's take a family picture. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. That sounds nice. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. This is like such an embarrassing situation. I'm like, okay, let's take another picture because I already have a selfie, right? So I was like, okay, well, maybe I can get a second picture in the family and it'll just be also another chance for it to be a good picture in case the first one was not good. I stand right next to Deborah because honestly, my family was not as excited as I was to be there. So I was like, y'all, I just need this picture to look good. And so basically I stand on one side of Deborah and then my mom stands there. And then my sister stands to the side again. And then my dad comes to the right side again. And I'm like, y'all, what are you doing? This is so weird. Obviously, Deborah Cox is the centerpiece. And now she's just all by herself on the left side. And so I have to push my sister over to that side and push my dad over to that side. So we're a balanced photograph. And I was like, sorry, Deborah, but this has to be a good picture. So I'm just going to make my sister move over here and my dad move over here. And luckily, she thought it was funny and not super weirdly neurotic. But anyway, we took the picture. It wasn't that good, but luckily my first one was good. Well, good for my unphotogenic face. Another highlight, she said she liked my hair. Honestly, like I've said before, my hair is my centerpiece of my whole body. I spend time on my hair. I love my hair. I love doing my hair. This is my expression. And so what, for her to notice it was just an amazing thing. Oh, another thing that I forgot to talk about was I got a pin, which I'm going to add to my collection. I don't know if you can see it. It just says bodyguard. Final highlight was I tweet at her and I say that she was legendary. She was amazing. Her voice is incomparable. And she favorited that tweet too. So it was just amazing. And I was just feeling validated. Do you know what I'm saying? You just never know when you go to these shows if they're going to work out or if they're going to move you or whatever. You just take that chance. And I'm just so glad that not only was the show amazing, but Deborah Cox is the nicest person ever in life. Probably because she's Canadian or whatever, but so nice, so talented, so gracious. If I had the money and could travel to wherever the tour is now, I would go see it again because her voice, man, it's just insane. There's control, there's power, there's tone, there's texture, there's range. I mean, to be able to sing Whitney, you have to have so many attributes to your voice. And she just is amazing. Oh, I've said amazing too many times. I don't know, y'all. If you can see it, go see The Bodyguard. No one will probably watch this video, but go see it. <laughs>